Yo, how's it going everybody and welcome back to this material UI course and in today's video we're going to be talking about how to work with app bars and how to use the app bar component and by the end of the tutorial we'll have built something like this right here it's a simple app bar with a little bit of branding and some links that don't currently go anywhere and it's also responsive so you can see if I were to shrink this up we see a hamburger icon with a drop down with our links as well so without further ado let's get into it alrighty so I've opened up the documentation for app bar and I'm going to quickly run over it um, at a high level and so basically what app bar according to material UI what we can use an app bar for is we can use it for branding we can use it for screen titles navigations and certain actions so one example a really prominent example is if you go to stack overflow you see an app bar right here it has some branding it has navigation it also has a basic search field and some login buttons also this is the home page of stack overflow I had no idea that they even had one. Alrighty, so go back into the documentation. If we scroll down, we'll see an example of a basic app bar right here. The premise is, if we look in the code, it's really simple to make. All you would have to do is you would have to import an app bar uh, tag, and then you have to contain it within a toolbar. And that's exactly what this is right here. It's a basic toolbar, and inside of the toolbar, you can actually define sections where certain sections can either be responsible for navigation, certain sections can be used for login, um, drop downs, etc. All right, so scrolling lower, we'll see an app bar with the responsive menu. This is actually what we're gonna be implementing into our app today. If you were to make our browser screen smaller, we'll see that this actually will collapse and show a hamburger icon instead of, um, instead of the links right there. So if I make it bigger, we'll see that we have the links. And if I make it smaller, we'll see a hamburger icon and with a dropdown. After that, we have an app bar with a search field and a primary search field. Basically, you're allowed to have a lot of different configurations for your app bar. If you want it, you can add images, you can add videos, you can add whatever you want. In this case, they had some search fields, a couple of icons, um, and a hamburger icon. And going even lower, we'll see a bottom app bar. Basically, it's a top app bar, but you can put it at the bottom of your screen. After that, we have the scrolling ability, so we can actually hide our app bar if we wanted on a scroll. And if we wanted to elevate it, we can also do that as well on scroll and a back to top button. So if I were to scroll down, we'll see this button pop up that it takes us back to the top. And we're also able to implement this with dark mode, which is very simple. We'll learn about how to implement dark mode into our app later. Um, without further ado, let's get our hands dirty and actually work with this component. Alrighty, so I've opened up the app that we've been building the last couple of videos. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder in my source folder and I'll call it components. And inside of my components folder, I'll create a new folder and I'll call it assets. Oops, not asserts. There we go. And this is what's going to host our branding images and all other images that we want for this app that we're going to be building. After that, I'm going to create a new file and I'll call it app bar.js. And just so we have a little bit of information, I'm going to copy what we have in our app.js file and I'll paste it into here. I'll call this app bar example. And I'll paste it right here. And I'll get rid of this content and put in here connected just so we know everything is connected. Let's get rid of this content so we don't need this. We don't need the buttons or any of this stuff. Neither do we need the app.css or this. And now if we go back into the app.js file, we're just going to go ahead and import it at the top right here. So I'll do app bar example and save that. And if we go back into the app, we should see connected right at the top right there. Alrighty, now I'm gonna go back into my app and go back into my app app bar JS file. I'll get rid of this connected and I'll create a box and inside of this box I'll do SX which is gonna be our styling uh, flex grow and we'll set it to one and we'll have a little bit of margin so I'll do margin bottom at three and it looks like it's not imported there we go. Next, what we're going to do is this is how to actually make the app bar. So first thing first, what we're going to do is app bar. And inside of there, we will give it a position. This is very important of static. And after that, we're going to put in our toolbar. And this toolbar is where we're going to host all of our content that we want for our app bar whether we want our left section to have some images or if we want our right section to have some search engines, we can have that implemented inside of the toolbar tags right here. 
And so this is what it looks like right here. This is the app bar with the toolbar. And now we can actually just begin in implementing some sort of uh, links, some imaging, and to make it responsive. So first things first, let's actually talk about how we can add some image branding. So remember when we created our assets folder, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to import the image, which is gonna be this face right here. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're going to do uh, typography and inside of the main typography tag right here I'll do no wrap we'll do component and we'll equate it to be a div and we'll give it some styling right here so margin right is defined as MR and we'll give it two. display what we'll do here is we'll do XS to be none and at MD to be flex. Basically what this means that at a certain width point when Material UI detects that the app is in the XS portion, it'll have no uh, display whatsoever. And if it's at medium, it'll have flex. So at none, sorry, at, at uh, XS, it will make the actual image disappear. And at medium, it'll make it look flex. And the way that we're gonna import this is I'll just do a simple image tag and I'll give it a source and for a little bit of styling, what I'll do is I'll do style and I'll do width at oops, width at 120 and we'll do height at about 40. And for our source, I'll do Lenny, Lenny face. Same thing, we also have to import it so at the very top. I'll just do uh, import Lenny face as dot slash assets slash lenny face dot jpeg oh whoops I meant to do from there we go and this also requires an alt so I'll just do alt is equal to lenny face there we go now if we go back into our app we will see on the left side lenny face let me zoom in a little bit oops there we go now we can see lenny face right there all right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna implement our ability to be able to create a hamburger icon that on the click of it, it'll show a drop-down menu. So the first thing that we're gonna do is outside of our uh, app bar example function, I'll do const pages is equal to cards, carousel, and table. Now these will also be tutorials for this course later in the road. No spoilers though. Hopefully you can keep a secret. So after that, what we're gonna do is inside of our app bar example function, I'll do const handle open nav menu. This is an exact copy of how it is in the actual documentation. And what we'll do is set anchor el nav to be event dot current target. Oops, target, there we go. After that, we'll do const handle close nav menu is equal to set anchor l nav to be null. And let's go ahead and import, oops, I meant to do, there we go, null like that. Now let's go ahead and import our actual variables for anchor l nav. So I'll do const anchor l nav and set anchor l nav i seem to have misspelled it so i'll do anchor c h o r there we go is equal to use state from react initially to be null there we go basically all we've done here is we're just checking whether or not the handle open nav menu is open or not. So if our drop down is open or not. And I forgot to add a N right here. There we go. So what we're gonna do is after this typography tag, I'm gonna implement a new box. And inside of this box, I will do SX is equal to flex grow one. And I'll do display at XS to be flex and at MD to be none. Basically all we're doing here is we're implementing our hamburger icon to either be displayed at 
a certain width or not. So at extra small, we want to display the hamburger icon and all of the contents that's inside of it. And at MD, we don't want any of it to display. Alrighty, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy some code from the actual documentation and implement it into our app. So I'm going to find our responsive menu right here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to grab all of this icon button information that's within the excess flex and MD none section of the box. So we're going to grab this icon button, which has a menu of which has a menu icon, and we'll also grab this menu as well. And I'll copy this and I'll put it into right here, like so. And let's go ahead and actually import all the stuff and we'll talk about what we've actually added right here. Alrighty, so to first import all of our stuff, this menu icon doesn't automatically have an import, so I went ahead and copied the actual import. And that's gonna be import menu icon from the actual icons library in Material UI. After that, we're gonna import our menu tag like so and right down here we also import our menu item alrighty so let's just go ahead and quickly talk about what we did so this icon button right here very simply is going to be responsible for on the click of it to run our handle open nav menu function which is going to be setting our anchor l nav use state variable to be event dot current target after that we have the menu uh, tag itself which number one at the very bottom right here has our prop of s X, which basically does um, display none at a width port of medium and uh, beyond and at extra small it displays as block and on close it'll run our handle close nav menu which just sets our anchor l nav function to be null after that we're checking or um, whether or not our anchor l nav is true or false so if it's false it'll open oops if it's false it'll close if it's true then it'll open and right after that, we are mapping through our pages const array right here at the top right here, which is very simple. All it's doing is taking a menu item for each of the individual items and setting it as the typography of the individual actual uh, text itself. So it'll set it as cards, carousel, and table. And after that, in the menu item itself, we have our key. And on click, we want to actually close our menu. Whenever we click on the link, we don't want to keep it open forever. So now let's actually go ahead and see what this actually looks like into our app. So if I go ahead and open it, we'll see our Lenny right there. But if I were to make our uh, dimensions smaller, we'll see our hamburger icon. If I click it, we'll see our drop down. And if we click on a link, it automatically closes. Now let's go ahead and actually implement our links to be right next to Lenny right here. So going back into my app. Alrighty, so for that, what I did was I copied the uh, code for the documentation. And what they're doing is they made a box that does the exact opposite of what our original box right here did, where at extra small, it'll display none, at a medium, it'll display flex. After that, all they're doing is they're, ma they're mapping through the pages array that we created, and they're doing uh, some styling, so color white, display block, uh, on click, handle close ma nav menu, and they're just displaying the pages right here with the key of page. And so now, if I save this and I go into my app, we should see our links right here with Lenny and if I make it smaller we see our hamburger icon with our actual cards right there so this is a little bit difficult for me to teach uh, as this is my first time dealing with it but I hope that you guys enjoyed it and if you did be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see y'all in the next one